All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today we're doing a really important springtime task for the fig trees. We are uncovering them, um, or in some cases, you guys might be unwrapping your fig trees if you wrap them this winter time. So for those of us in zones five, six, and seven, um, now might be a good time to start thinking about uncovering or undoing your winter protection methods. And the reason for that is because first off, here in the Philadelphia area at least, uh, we had a really mild winter time. Uh, we only saw a low of 14 degrees Fahrenheit. That's really quite mild in terms of fig trees. We've talked a lot about that in some of the other videos we've been doing. But also last night, I think we had what I would consider our last really extreme cold temperature. And that was about 19 or 20 degrees Fahrenheit. The 10 day forecast looks good. And then when we get into March, it's a lot less likely, especially the further you go on, that you even see a temperature in the 20s. Uh, of course you can, and you can still see frost, but we're not really concerned with temperatures typically in the mid to high 20s. We only are really concerned with protecting our fig trees through the winter time when temperatures really get down into the teens. And it depends on the level of lignification of the branches. Each tree is different, and so right here next to me, is a campaneri tree and this was just totally unprotected and this tree has no damage on it um, 14 degree low is really not enough to damage most fig trees in fact i probably didn't have to do any winter protection whatsoever on most of the varieties but if there was a tree that has branches down here you can see this one's sticking up that i didn't protect and this is really not well lignified. Well, again, what we talked about in the recent video that we showed you guys, the branches are not able to withstand those winter lows depending on that level of lignification. So if Campaneri can survive zero degrees Fahrenheit when the branches are really well lignified like this, if it's not and the branches are not lignified, let's say to this degree, well then this is not gonna survive about 10 degrees Fahrenheit, you know, and, and it goes up from there. You can certainly have really hardy fig trees, um, you know, take damage at even temperatures of like 20 degrees or even 25 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's what we're trying to prevent with this, these winter protection methods. We wanna make sure that we're protecting every part of our fig tree. Um, and that way we can prevent that vicious cycle, that paradox that I've been talking about, where if the trees take a lot of winter damage, they're gonna grow a lot the following season. And then when they grow a lot, they're not gonna lignify properly going into the next winter time. And then you're gonna have a less hardy fig tree because of that. So you just have to stop it. And that's why we protected all the trees in this plot. You can't see any of them actually, other than this Campaneri, they're all bent over. This was my winter protection method that we mentioned months ago that I did to all the trees. Even the trees like Campaneri here, I have an insurance policy so that if it did get below zero or close to zero, um, I had still took in a, taken a branch. Let's say, you know, this is a branch here. I cut off one of my pear trees recently, a really long water shoot. But let's say it was just like this in the fall. Well, I took it and bent this over really close to the ground with uh, garden stakes or even like heavy brocks, landscape materials, got that really close to the soil and then covered it with these wood chips. But here's the thing, we're trying to now uncover these fig trees because we don't want them to be protected too long into the springtime. Depending on where you guys live, and today it's gonna be around 60 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, and really for the next few days, it's gonna rain and it's gonna be quite warm. Uh, not that there's a huge urgency, but certainly the further you get into the spring, the warmer those temps are consistently, uh, the more that you can have a chance of rot or mold underneath these wood chips. Um, so in the wintertime, it's not a big deal. You cover them with, uh, with the wood chips. And some people really like to argue against putting wood chips against the trunks of your trees. Certainly, I wouldn't recommend doing that. But in the winter when it's cold, there isn't really any of that bacteria that will develop to rot the bark or mold the bark. Um, but when it gets warmer outside, that can certainly happen. It's a much more higher chance of that happening. So if you wanna make sure that you're sufficiently protecting your trees, you have to uncover them at the right time. I know that sounds crazy, but typically what I find people do is that they, they wrap their trees or protect them too early 
in the fall and then they don't actually unwrap them or unprotect them um, and they do that too late into the spring and either one of them causes problems. So if we just do the right, we have the right timing, we, we follow that rule of, you know, protect them as late as possible and unwrap them as early as possible. We only really need to give them, if you just think about it logically, we only have to give them protection when the extreme temperatures come in. But again, like I said, here in the Philadelphia area, we had 20 or 19 last night, pretty confident that we're not really gonna see much temperatures in the teens, like probably until next year. Um, we probably won't see temperatures in the teens um, uh, or even maybe even the low 20s for the rest of March and into the spring. Uh, it's certainly possible, but you know, I'm not really concerned about it, um, depending on that level of lignification of the branches. But what I'm seeing here now that I wanna you know, take these wood chips up, essentially, and uncover these trees, plop them back up, get the stakes in place so I can position all the trees, um, assess any damage that we have. I am seeing here underneath these wood chips a lot of frost. Um, uh, what I mean by that is that the wood chips here are frozen. The ground is a stable temperature actually right here. The ground next to me is not frozen. Uh, I could dig a hole very easily. But because these wood chips are so insulative, this is what makes them amazing, is that they are a stable temperature all winter time. And this is the beauty of it. We can actually buy ourselves some time in the spring right now because this is still being um, kept at a cold temperature. So even though it might be 60 today and then our, it increases our chances of rot, well, believe it or not, underneath these wood chips, it's still frozen. I mean, this is almost like frozen solid. The further I go down, actually, it's, it's quite uh, watery and a bit warmer. But on the surface level, this is a frozen mat. And so again, like, like I said, that is giving us a stable temperature, not only a warmer temperature in the winter time, but a colder temperature now that it's the spring. And we're gonna essentially be able to use these wood chips and extend our time that we could, if we wanted to, leave these trees protected. So there's no real rush. This video is just, uh, you know, at least for me, I wanted to come out here and do this as soon as I could. Uh, this is just one of those springtime tasks that's good to get out of the way. Plus, again, like I said, the rot is a potential issue. Um, but once this ground thaws, probably in the next, uh, maybe the next couple days, the surface here will, will thaw pretty good. Uh, I can just come right in here, like I said, and unprotect all these trees. The way that we do it here with the wood chips, if you guys did this method or you're thinking about doing this method, is I like to come here at the base of every tree. I know where the bases is, excuse me, the bases of all the trees. And I just come in here really close to the base. I move away all the wood chips at the base so I can get a good picture of what I'm doing. Once I have a good picture here of the base, then I can see if there's any uh, shoots that we covered because they're gonna come out from the center of the the tree. So that way I can follow a line. Let's say there was a shoot here and it was going out this way. Well, now I know that it's going out this way and then I just uncover all the wood chips from the base. Actually here, this is the perfect example right there. So then I will follow this and just uncover this until I get to all of the branch. See how unlignified this is and see how wet the wood chips are. I mean, it just really proves my point. We don't want to cover these trees too long. And because of that lack of lignification, I mean, if I didn't protect this branch, even with a 14 degree low we talked about recently, I may not have seen success overwintering this tree. All right, so here's the garden staple right there. So I just pull that up and then we lift this branch quite a nice long branch and there it is unprotected the last thing to do we're gonna get a stake put the stake in the ground this is probably the perfect angle I want and then I will attach this tree to that stake and I want them to grow out this way because there's so many trees in here that are really close together only two foot on center like I said there's 30 trees in this plot that uh, I have to uncover the branches and so even a tree, like I said, like this Campanieri, it's protected 
down here at the soil level, the top is totally fine, but there's still branches underneath here that I covered on purpose because I wanna use that protection method as an insurance policy. It's the same thing over here, guys. These are a lot of the trees that have successfully overwintered in the past. And uh, even though they have really large tops to them, it was a mild winter time, I still went ahead and covered a lot of shoots underneath every single tree as that insurance policy. And so that way, if the top died, I've said this before in other videos, then at least I have something underneath that has that right hormonal balance that I can just uncover, plop back up. And then that way I won't have this vicious cycle of a tree that's not lignified properly. And I can successfully, hopefully overwinter that the following growing season. So that is um, uncovering, undoing, <laughs> unwrapping the winter protection that you guys have for fig trees. Hope you enjoyed this one. We'll see you for the next one, all right? Hit that subscribe button for me, hit that like button, and uh, check out the companion guide actually I've written on this particular topic on the blog, figboss.com. We'll see you for the next one. Take care.